I've been away for a while because I just had surgery on my leg and I was kind of unable to walk for a week and now I can kind of hobble around. But what I've got here is a little 100 millimeter, 50 gram all up weight quad. I'm going to fly it around for you first. guys it's pretty windy here the fact that this thing that's 50 grams can handle this kind of wind it's pretty impressive Most of you are probably wondering what on earth I am doing with a brushed quad. And um, I would say that I never had a brushed phase where a lot of people started out with little brushed toys and tiny whoops and things. I only started out with five inch brushless and that's the way I took them. I and I've, I've flown other people's little tiny whoops, but I was never really enthralled by it. I wasn't really excited by it. I mean, it flies okay, but it doesn't really have very good performance. Now. The more recent Tiny Whoop motors and the more recent Tiny Whoop batteries and things have gotten unusually good and people are doing just mind-blowing things with a Tiny Whoop, but it still doesn't quite have just, it just doesn't, doesn't feel good to me. And I've always wanted something super tiny that I can fly around kind of anywhere at any time without bothering anybody ever or doing anything illegal. And so that's the kind of allure of something that's this size, something that's so, so tiny. But now, where would I be without my theories? Let's discuss why brushed is just not very good and why Tiny Whoops are what they are and why they're so popular. So there are a couple of inherent problems with brushed that I did not know until I started testing things, started trying things. Um, first of all, all the parts of this thing is, going to be, is in the description below. You can build one if you like. I wouldn't really recommend it, but if you want to build one, they're all down there. So the primary issue with brushed motors 
is number one, the response of the motor. The motor has really poor response. These are 8520 motors, so they're kind of like bigger than like some of the bigger brushed motors, but they still have a really, really poor <laughs> response. I mean, like a throttle pump on these things is not a throttle pump, it's like a throttle wave. And you're not flying it like you would a normal mini quad, you're kind of just trying to stay aloft. Yeah, you can, you know, punch the throttle and it'll gain some altitude, but you're not, you're not really going anywhere. It runs on 1S, three volts. There are TV remotes that run on <laughs> more volts than this thing. And the next issue, which I actually think is a bigger issue, is that brushed motors, well, I mean, this is running Betaflight 3.2, 3.3, like the best, it has everything, it has OSC, all of it, which is kind of amazing. And I didn't even know that Betaflight had a brushed setting for the ESC protocol, <laughs> which is just funny. But this brush setting, it doesn't have motor braking. And when you are flying a quad that has a little bit kind of a high-ish, power to weight ratio which this thing does surprisingly it has a close to four to one power to weight ratio it feels really floaty when you don't have motor braking now motor braking is what stops the motor so if you want to do kind of like a roll or a flip or something one side needs to power up and the other side needs to slow down but in this case the side that needs to slow down doesn't actually slow down it just spins down which results in more of a barrel roll and not really a flip now, the Tiny Whoop is a very special circumstance, and it actually performs surprisingly well. But before I get to that, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Okay, so the components are down below. The camera I'm using is actually the FXT F80. It's a new camera they made when they heard that I wanted to do something with a brush or something. They sent me out a couple of these cameras. It's actually a pretty impressive camera. It's a 1200 TV line, 16.9 wide camera that's like super duper tiny micro, which is pretty impressive. I originally had the little tiny whoop camera on there, but it was a piece of junk. I mean, the view is just not very good. Um, it does weigh two grams more, but with this kind of thrust and power, I can carry two extra grams of weight. Uh, for batteries, I'm not using 1S batteries that I buy because 1S batteries are just a pain to source good ones, and they're just they don't perform very well. So my strategy was to find good 3S and 4S packs at around 450 milliamps, which it really needs like a 500 milliamp. And um, then I just split them apart and turn them into 1S packs. When you are splitting them apart, don't cut the tabs. You actually need to desolder them or else you cannot solder to them again. I don't know why. I haven't tried the aspirin method, but if somebody can tell me how to solder to this tab, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so let's discuss why Tiny Whoops are what they are and why they're so popular and why they actually do perform surprisingly well. So my biggest issue with the Tiny Whoop is actually the prop guards. And while the prop guards are pretty much required for indoor flight and they really do make things much easier for indoor flight, they do detract a lot from the performance. It's hard for me to believe that 15 grams of thrust going through a duct is performing like a duct normally would. They're just prop guards to be prop guards. But there is something to gain from having those prop guards, shockingly, and now I know what it is. So like I said, brushed things don't have motor braking and having those prop guards to kind of like reduce the disc loading properties, it actually slows the prop down when it's not being powered and it slows it down really quickly. So when you do a flip or a roll on a tiny whoop, it's actually a flip or a roll. And I have flown one tiny whoop without prop guards with just a little carbon frame and it did fly a lot, a lot better, a lot more powerful, but I didn't really notice any of this stuff until I started investigating my own little thing on, on my own. So th that's probably one of the main reasons why a tiny rope actually does fly well and why it feels like it's really, really agile because when you do yaw and turn and do moves, the side or the motors that need to slow down actually slow down really, really quickly. The next thing is that the power to weight ratio of a tiny whoop is pretty bad <laughs> by today's standards with five inches and, and six inch quads and everything. Uh, and that actually probably adds to the performance of it because having too much power for indoors is not a good thing. Having too much power for a uh, proximity flight is actually very, very difficult. So the whole thing, the little tiny whoop actually flies around more like an aerial photography platform, I think, in a super duper tiny scale. And what we feel as really high agility is really just really sluggish performance that we can man manage really well because we're humans. These are these are just ideas and thoughts I've had on based on experimenting with this thing. Anyways, so I am going to I'm going to investigate the brushless versions of these little tiny quads and the reason I'm really interested is because 
I can carry this thing. I can fly this thing anywhere and I can do like technically super illegal stuff like building dives with something this tiny and it doesn't matter. Nobody care. Like I cannot, I can't possibly harm anything or cause any trouble with this tiny little thing. But there are a couple things that are really weird about it. So the PIDs on it are really wacky. They're basically just sky high. They're, I'm going to paste them in the, in the video here, but they're in the description below as well. Um, when I first flew it with the stock PIDs, it was really terrible. And I thought, oh, well, just brush, brush just is really just terrible. But after I tuned it a, a lot, it got a lot, a lot better. And it actually performs surprisingly well. It does have an F3 chip on board, so it can't do 8K, 8K. It only does 4K, 8K. But that's that's just the thing. I, am I just delusional to think that brushed can be really fun? I mean, it does fly surprisingly well. The throttle is terrible. I mean, there's basically no throttle control. Like you, you you can punch the throttle all day. It doesn't do anything. You kind of just waft up and down. It it is just one S, so you can't expect that much. I do think that brushless is going to be better, but brushless incorporates a lot more complexity into the whole system. I mean, brushless motors, brushless ESCs, brushless everything, and then the stacks aren't very good for like little 16 by 16 millimeter brushless things. And already this flies super wonky. Like you have to jack up the anti-gravity to get it to stop like wobbling when you punch the throttle anyways. I don't expect brushless to be better. I actually expect it to be worse. And one of the main issues with things of this size, one of the reasons why I think that quads of this size are pretty much failing in the market there's not like a huge market for it is because people don't want to spend 250 dollars on a quad of this size and having like getting quality components for boards this small and things this small they don't cost less money they cost the same amount of money and companies are just making them cheaper with cheaper components because people don't want to pay 200 which i agree i, I wouldn't want to pay that much for something that's small either so it's a challenge to do this size in brushless, although I have been talking to the guys at Flex RC and a couple of the people that are really considered uh, micro geniuses, uh, Tomoquads. I got to start talking to Tomoquads. That guy's pretty awesome. And uh, just see if there's anything here because I shockingly enjoy flying this thing too much. I mean, this is the first micro that I woke up in the morning and I actually wanted to fly for a pack or two. And that's saying a lot because I really don't like anything less than five inch. I've been building things of this size and tiny things. Like I built dozens and dozens of them. I just don't show anybody because they're just terrible and I don't think anybody would care. But this thing is so cheap, so simple, so like brainless to maintain. I mean, it's nothing and the motors are, are cheap and easy to replace. I mean, they don't even screws to the damn thing. <laughs> like it's nothing. So I'm wondering, is it worth developing a higher quality brushed board? And that's really my question here. Should I work on developing a higher quality brushed board? Would people even, care? do you want to just take your old Simon X5 and throw a new board in there, maybe put some 2S on it, uh, although I don't think 2S is really gonna add much to brushed, like people have said, which does make sense. I, am, am I just delusional? Should I, should I just move only towards brushless space? I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. But um, yeah, it is what it is and, and we'll see where this takes me because um, I don't really have time to fly the big five inch stuff all the time anymore. <laughs> Anyways, oh yeah, I am using dental floss here to hold down my antenna and my um, battery lead. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. Okay, don't forget the floss. Merry Christmas and bye.